To Zizek, everything is ideology, making ideology inescapable since it has to do with the very way in which we perceive the world subconsciously, we are not even aware of it. Though ideologies can vary across cultures, we cannot escape the concept of ideology itself. As a metaphor, think of individual ideologies in terms of different card games. We can prefer to play poker over blackjack or solitaire over a game of spades. I can choose to embrace Christianity instead of Hinduism, for example. However, though we can pick the game we are playing, we cannot escape from the card table itself. Though we can choose between ideologies, we cannot cease having ideas of our own. Even an anti-ideological outlook like nihilism or Zen Buddhism is still an ideological outlook after all. It is a way of perceiving reality, and mankind will always perceive reality through his sense of consciousness as long as he is alive. So, how does one then deal with ideology? I would propose that perhaps the point is not to escape ideology, but simply to understand it. When we are unaware of how ideology operates, it remains other or outside our sense of understanding. Conversely, by empathizing and understanding how ideology operates, it ceases to remain other in some sense. To understand ideology as Zizek uses the term in the Marxist sense, we need to understand its starting roots, which lie in the subconscious association of signs and symbols, creating a false consciousness that people internalize as truth. To Lacan, it is this subconscious symbolic realm that manufactures the imaginary realm of our conscious cultural outlook on life. If we can understand how words go on to socially construct our cultural outlooks on life, then we can understand the origins of ideology. Much like Althusser, C. Wright Mills, and Marx, whose ideas we've previously discussed, Gramsci's concept of cultural hegemony shows how ideologies can be internalized through cultural outlooks so as to perpetuate them, getting people to conform to ruling class practices, normalizing them so they are more easily accepted, allowing for the culture, and thus the ruling class, to continue to propagate itself through the dominant ideology, i.e. the dominant mode of speech or discourse that we conceive of as culture. In other words, culture contains a series of symbolic associations and imagery that we can internalize to be true to the point where we don't even know we are making an interpretation, creating the sense of false consciousness, which can be used to manipulate the masses. As we mentioned before with Robert Anton Wilson, it is this sense of naive realism that locks people into their outlooks or lenses or gazes in life, causing them to outcast or disagree with those who do not adhere to the same way of perceiving reality as themselves which they perceive of as objective or impartial reality, as opposed to understanding it is a subjective, impartial perspective that shapes our sense of consciousness. Zizek makes a good comment on ideology, noticing how it can be reflected in places where we're least likely to look, as seen in toilet designs. But though we all have different toilets, and though the excremental ideologies we produce may vary, they should be flushed down the sewers just the same. Perhaps understanding ideology is understanding that almost everything we speak is ridiculous. People say things so utterly ridiculous that they can't be commented on. When we see the absurdity and banality behind words, it is difficult to come to comment on anything. Ideology is inescapable, keeping mankind locked in the absurd situation known as language. If culture ideology dwells in the dark, in the subconscious association of signs, then perhaps understanding its origins and how it operates is akin to us holding a candle as we grope our way around its shadowy world. We cannot ever see ideology clearly, but having a little light is better than being completely blind.